What's up, guys? And welcome back to Total Recon Part 3. As you can see, I'm currently doing some recon on a scope right now because I'm all about that efficiency while I'm talking to you guys. So if you're struggling with bug bounty reconnaissance or your hacking methodology, stick with me. I'm going to try and help you out as best I can so you can go after those bug bounties as well. To pick up where we left off in the first two videos, in this video, I'm going to add FFUF as well as GF patterns. So what that's going to do for us is we're going to fuzz all our subdomains and directories and throw away what isn't valid. And we're going to send all that information over to GF patterns. And we're going to look for cross-site scripting and SQL injection entry points. And if any of those patterns hit, we're going to ask GF patterns to return those back to me so I can go ahead and test those parameters for any vulnerabilities. Now, if you didn't hit that like button or subscribe button yet, you are missing out on some epic content. Stay tuned. We're about to jump into this code and add FFUF and GF patterns to our bug bounty reconnaissance. Nice camera action. All right, guys, so let's go over or recap real quick what our current script is doing. We have our word list location, we have our resolvers location, and we have our resolve domain location. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a directory targeting whatever domain, for example, google.com, and it's gonna create that, then it's gonna create a sources folder, Intel folder, Intel nuclei, and so on. It's gonna create these folders for us. Then it's gonna go into subdomain enumeration. And for that, I like to use subfinder, asset finder, and AMAS for my subdomain enumeration. I have shuffle DNS commented out. Sometimes I like to use it, sometimes I don't. If you're using shuffle DNS, you're going to need to add the IP addresses that resolve for that domain and put it in your resolvers text file. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to cat all these text documents and we're going to combine it into one massive text document called all.txt and this will be all the subdomains. Then I have commented out again shuffle DNS and then we're going to go into HTTP probe. We're going to cat all the subdomains and we're going to probe them to see what exactly is valid and we're going to call it httpx.txt. We're going to then throw them into nuclei for scanning. Again, this new file is called httpx. So we're going to call out to nuclei and what I'm using currently, I'm using the CVEs templates, I'm using the vulnerabilities templates. I'm looking for files, payloads, and just generic detections. And they're gonna output those into their respected text files for me. So from there, I don't know if I added way back URL scanning in the last video, but here it is. So we're going to reach out to way back URLs and you're going to have to get this from the GitHub repo. And what I'm asking way back URLs is take the all.txt URLs and look back in the Wayback machine to see if you can find any more URLs that you might know about. And then we're going to pretty much just grep for these extensions. And then we're going to remove port 80, port 443, because we just want HTTPS or HTTP along with the domain name. So then it's gonna output it into a wayback.txt file for us. And we're going to remove the temporary file that it created. Let's go ahead and jump into FFUF and then GF patterns.
So let's go over this. We're going to fuzzwayback.txt, which is up here. And we're going to output that into a CSV file called valid.temp.txt. And we're going to grab that text file. We're going to grep HTTP. And we're gonna use the awk command and we're going to do a dash F, which is a symbol for a colon. And then we're going to print it and we're going to send it over to valid.txt. So what we're saying is we want you to grab these valid URLs and I don't want the ports attached to it. I just want the website name. Then we're going to remove the valid underscore temporary file. So once we have our valid file, how we like it, we're going to send it over to GF patterns. And this is important because you want the full URL in your valid.txt. You don't want any spaces. You don't want the ports next to it or anything like that. You want the actual URL and we're sending it over to GF patterns and we're going to look for cross-site scripting as well as SQL injection. So let me go ahead and show you the GitHub repos for this real quick. Here's the repo for FFUF. You can come over here. I'll add it in the description for you to download. It's a pretty simple install. And what we're doing is we're just fuzzing all our subdomains and URLs. And then here is GF patterns. So GF patterns is useful for again, looking for specific patterns in a URL. So I used this GF pattern from Tom Nom Nom. I'll add this into the description as well. So once you have GF patterns installed, I used this repo for the cross-site scripting patterns. Here's the patterns that I'm using to look for URL parameters that might be vulnerable to cross-site scripting. So any URL parameters that we came across that have these, you can add and build out to this as well. But this is what I'm currently using for cross-site scripting patterns. And for SQL injection, these are the patterns I'm using as well. So any URL parameter that might have this in its URL, it's going to output it for me and we'll be able to test that again for cross-site scripting or SQL injection. So again, if you don't have these GitHub repos, I'll add these into the description for you guys. Oh, and if you don't have Wayback URLs, I'll add that into the description as well. So up to this point, this should be working for you. You should be able to find again you should be able to automate subfinder, asset finder, AMAS. You should be able to automate shuffle DNS if you want it. HTTP probe should be automated for you guys already. The nuclei scanner should already be automated for you. And all of this should be working for you guys currently up to this video. The next thing you have to do is get Wayback URLs, get FFUF, and get the GF patterns working on your machine. Once they're working, you can go ahead and then just automate it like I've done here. If you need any help with that, if you need any help with installing Go language or anything like that from the GitHub repo, hit me up in the comments section, hit me up on Discord. I'll be here to help you guys out as much as I can. So good luck in finding your vulnerabilities. Good luck in finding your parameters. So as always, thanks for watching this and I'll see you in the next video.